This is the Music History Today podcast for October 6th. On today's show, the original jazz singer premieres, Howard Stern moves, and a power couple gets married. First up, though, on this date in 1871, the African-American vocal ensemble, the Fisk University Jubilee Singers, started an American tour. In 1898, the musical fraternity, the Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia Fraternity, was founded in Boston, Massachusetts at the New England Conservatory of Music. In 1927, the jazz singer, the first movie to have a soundtrack, also talking, and also Al Jolson in blackface singing the song Mamie, was released in movie theaters. The movie led to the end of the silent movie era. In 1964, the Beatles recorded their song Eight Days a Week. In 1967, police broke up a performance by Big Brother and the Holding Company at the Matrix Club in San Francisco. In 1978, Benny and Frida of the group ABBA were married. Also on that same day, Mick Jagger publicly apologized for some racist lyrics on the Rolling Stones album Some Girls. In 1980, Jodney Rotten of the Sex Pistols was arrested after a barroom brawl in Dublin, Ireland and sentenced to three months in prison. In 1990, Metallica started recording their album Metallica, sometimes known as the Black Album. In 1994, Glenn Frey underwent surgery for his colon. In 1996, Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, the biggest music power couple not named Jay-Z and Beyonce, got married. In 2004, after years of being watched and fined by the Federal Communications Commission, better known as the FCC, Howard Stern decided to move his radio talk show from broadcast radio to Sirius Satellite Radio, which the FCC does not regulate. Yet. We shall see. In 2006, Slayer's album Christ Delusion was pulled from record stores in India due to a protest from a Catholic group that was based in Mumbai. In 2011, the Julianne Ho version of the movie Footloose premiered in movie theaters. In 2012, entertainer Audra McDonald married Broadway actor Will Swenson. In 2015, the music video game Rock Band 4 was released. In 2016, Paisley Park, Prince's home and recording studio, opened to the public for the first time for tours. We discuss Paisley Park and also how Steve Jobs managed to somehow save the music industry from itself on this week's Music History In-Depth podcast, which has already dropped on this channel that you are listening to this podcast on or watching this podcast on. Please like, subscribe, do all the algorithm things, blah, 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 yakety schmackety. Anywho, moving on. In 2021, Carnegie Hall reopened for the first time since COVID lockdowns closed all the concert venues in March of 2020. In classical music, in 1869, Johannes Brahms premiered the Lieberschleder Waltzer. And in 1956, Dmitry Shostakovich premiered his sixth Iron Quartet. In theater, in 1948, the musical Polonaise opened on Broadway. Albums that were released on October 6th include in 1969 when Jack Bruce released Songs for a Tailor. In 1972, Genesis released Foxtrot. In 1973, Jesse Colin Young released Song for Julie. In 1978, Hawkwind released Hawk Lords, 25 Years On, and Rachel Sweet released Fool Around. In 1982, Lionel Richie released his self-titled album. In 1983, George Strait released Right or Wrong. In 1986, Metal Church released The Dark and Aha released Scoundrel Days. In 1992, Bob Marley and the Wailers released Songs of Freedom. The Tragically Hip released Fully Completely. Soul Asylum released Grave Dancers Union, Joan Baez released Play Me Backwards, and R.E.M. released their classic 90s album, Automatic for the People. In 1997, Aphex Twin released Come to Daddy. In 1998, John Mellencamp released his self-titled album, Sunvolt released Wide Swing Tremolo, and Manu Chao released Clandestino. 
In 2002, Kansas released Device Voice Drum. In 2008, Bob Dylan released the Bootleg Series Volume 8, Telltale Signs Rare and Unreleased, 1989-2006. The Clash released The Clash Live at Shea Stadium. And Oasis released Dig Out Your Soul. In 2009, Roseanne Cash released The List. KISS released the album Sonic Boom as an exclusive album at Walmart stores only, and Everclear released in a different light. Singles that were released on October 6th in the UK include in 1966 when The Seekers released Georgie Girl, in 1967 Episode 6 released I Can See Through You, and in 1978 Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers released Listen to Her Heart. Meanwhile, in America, in 1956, Elvis Presley did a twofer. He released Any Way You Want Me, That's How I Will Be, and Love Me Tender. In 1961, Mary Wells released Strange Love. In 1965, The Yardbirds released I'm a Man, and The Supremes released I Hear a Symphony. In 1966, Martha and the Vandellas released I'm Ready for Love. In 1969, the Beatles did a twofer. They released Come Together and Something. In 1970, Elvis Presley released You Don't Have to Say You Love Me. In 1972, Chicago released Dialogue Parts 1 and 2. And The Stylistics released I'm Stone in Love with You. In 1977, Aerosmith released Draw the Line. In 1978, the Moody Blues released Driftwood. In 1981, Journey released that earworm of a song, Don't Stop Believin'. Also, Stevie Nicks and Don Henley released Leather and Lace, two classics on the same day. In 1982, Madonna released Everybody. In 1986, Huey Lewis and the News released Hip to be Square. In 1992, Elton John released The Last Song. In 1996, Matchbox 20 released Back to Good. In 1998, Eagle Eye Cherry released Save Tonight. In 2003, Blondie released Good Boys. In 2009, Justin Bieber released One Less Lonely Girl. And in 2016, Why Don't We release Taking You. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on October 6th include rapper Hetty One, William Butler of Arcade Fire, Sergio Calderon of In Real Life, singer Dyson, spelled D-Y-S-N, singer Jared Dines, Singer Tay Brooks, rapper Yo Hyun of the group Monsta X, Elvis Presley's first manager, who also managed Johnny Cash, Bob Neal. Also, rocker Matthew Sweet, Tommy Stinson of The Replacements, David Hidalgo of Los Lobos, Kevin Cronin of REO Speedwagon, Thomas McClary of The Commodores, Tim Burgess of Tapau, singer Millie Small, and Bobby Farrell of Boney M. Artists who unfortunately passed away on October 6th include composer Heinrich Albert, who passed away in 1651 at the age of 47. Composer and violinist Francesco Manfredini passed away in 1762 at the age of 78. Opera singer Antonio Saccini passed away in 1786 at the age of 56. Composer Stephen Elvey passed away in 1860 at the age of 55. Composer Leon Kreutzer passed away in 1868 at the age of 51. Pianist Thomas Tellefsen passed away in 1874 at the age of 50. Organist Dudley Buck passed away in 1909 at the age of 70. Composer Frederick Cowan passed away in 1935 at the age of 83. Composer Ferdinando Liuzzi passed away in 1940 at the age of 55. Composer Arnold Walter passed away in 1973 at the age of 71. 
band leader Nelson Riddle of the Nelson Riddle Orchestra passed away in 1985 at the age of 64. Songwriter Huey Chalice passed away in 1995 at the age of 88. Drummer Crash Morgan of the group Messenger and also the group Big Sugar passed away from heart issues in 1995 at the age of 35. Violinist Lillian Fuchs passed away in 1995 at the age of 91. Singer Amalia Rodriguez passed away in 1999 at the age of 79. Composer Warren Benson passed away in 2005 at the age of 81. Trumpet player John Greek of the Fabulous Wailers passed away from cancer in 2006 at the age of 65. Laza Ristovsky of the group Smack passed away from multiple sclerosis in 2007 at the age of 51. Eric McCready of the group Middle of the Road passed away in 2007 at the age of 62. Singer and actor Anthony Kammerling passed away in 2010 at the age of 44. Singer and actress Colette Renard passed away in 2010 at the age of 86. Jazz band leader and tuba player Brad Felt passed away from cancer in 2011 at the age of 55. Composer Will Ogden passed away in 2013 at the age of 92. Country music singer Billy Joe Royal passed away in 2015 at the age of 73. Opera singer Montserrat Caballé passed away in 2018 at the age of 85. The legendary Ginger Baker of the group Cream and also Ginger Baker's Air Force passed away in 2019 at the age of 80. And we touch upon his life as well on the Music History In-Depth podcast, along with all the other ones that we have spoken about, along with the legendary guitarist Eddie Van Halen of the group Van Halen, who passed away in 2020 from cancer at the age of 65. Both of them are part of this week's Music History In-Depth podcast. Singer Johnny Nash passed away in 2020 at the age of 80. Guitarist Pat Fish of the group The Jazz Butcher passed away in 2021 at the age of 63. Country music singer Jody Miller passed away in 2022 at the age of 80. And accordion player and comedian Judy Taduda passed away from cancer in 2022 at the age of 72. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is October 7th, when in 2023, over 260 people were killed at the Nova Music Festival in Israel when Hamas gunmen attacked the festival during their wider attack on the country of Israel. 